and this is? I'm Mark Friedberg from Dudley University in Waltham, Massachusetts. And this is our session on hot technologies and cool applications. We were going to call it hot technologies and scalding applications, but that wasn't going to go. Yes, Donald said no more of that. Um, that's us here with, uh, at South by Southwest EDU last week, and Corinne didn't make it to the food truck. I wanted food trucks so badly. Uh, so every day we'd go out and probably go to the food trucks, but they kept being closed. So as soon as I got on the plane, what happened, Mark? I was the food truck. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, I, and I sent her a picture of the Indian food she missed. I did. It was called Nonsense. How could I miss that? It was good. Cool stuff. Hey, we want to show you some great technologies that all have two things in common. They're free and they're fabulous. You ever been to my session before? How do you say that exactly? Of the day. For example, uh, the newest, this video was taken. 
maybe every one of our schools should have one. Do you see how that captures the attention? You know, I have set up a feeling in the class that's so important. Even if it's an online class, by starting your week out, it creates a feeling. So just real quick, a quick advertisement. Check out our books later. Corinne's books and Mark's. Tell about your update for Web 2.0. Last year we updated the Web 2.0 textbook to include new topics like big data and Google Hangouts and a lot of the things we're going to be showing here today. And this year I joined the Discovery Computers team, so... <laughs> so, so you won't recognize the cool stuff that's in there, so, we'll think, so check those books out in the bookstore too. Uh, raise your hand again. One more time, we're going to have the people in the back sit by some of their hands up right now, if that's advanced, I know we got seats. So if you come this way real quick, uh, hold your hands up until you find a box that to sit with you. Sorry. Hey, let's get into our first cutting-edge technology. Technology, well, sort of, Mark. So I was teaching our intro to IT class, and I showed this video to my, to my students, and nobody knew who this guy was. Who knows? But we use this as a way to talk about how the world has changed, and how the world has evolved, and how what was predicted then is actually happening now. And where's the video? <laughs> and and Corinne did you the video? Yeah, I clearly did. Well, let's keep talking while I get this set up for you. Okay. So, so it's, it's a video of Walter Cronkite taken in 1967. <laughs> and he was on a show called The 21st Century, and he was talking about what the 21st century home would look like. Again, 35 years ago, long before our students were born, and long before anybody might actually know who, who he was. And there it is. And I, and I brought this up because I wanted to bring up a conversation in class about how is how has the world changed and how far off might Those things be. Most of the time, and they all the 21st century. As a group of here, allow him to carry on normal business activities without ever going to an office away from home. This console provides a summary of news relayed by satellite from all over the world. Now we get a newspaper copy for permanent reference, but I just returned this point. <laughs>
to our packet over here, and and then you can add your own content to the to the page. Um, in a moment, I'll show you what I do with this in my class. In fact, while while why don't I do that, um, it's it's, it's, it's as simple as Corinne just did. She added a picture. Up, um, if you look at this photo, it's a little small to see here. I'll make it a little bit larger so you can see it. Uh, this is 2005 when they have the uh, Pope. Uh, what's the proper name? Sanctioning. Let's go with that. Uh, notice how many uh, phones in the audience? Uh, this. So what Patton allows you to do is level of images. Mark's going to show you what he's already added to this. So let's go back here and show some uh, items right there. So here's a Padlet that we used in my class. I was teaching digital media. And I created a Padlet. I divide the students in teams of two. I give them each a website to look at uh, from a list that's down here on the left. Oops, where'd it go? And then the students will then create a piece of digital media and post their digital media to the Padlet site. So for example, this group created a media uh, Prezi presentation using Prezi. And, and, and then another group <coughs> Another group uh, went in and created a schedule using Doodle. Another group created a, um, an interactive map using a mapping tool. And so each group had... What is that? We're not taking our chances on that. <laughs> Describe what they actually worked on. And let me refresh it one more time. It's everybody's been so busy. 
Uh, let's see what everyone is contributing here. Our last look at painting our wall right here. Thank you all. Love you guys. Thank you so much for the shout out there. Oh, look at that. Uh, you think? Look, 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 look. Coming from Miss Coleman in the back somewhere. Hey, there's us. There is us live. Isn't that great? She took a quick picture. Ah, gotta love that. So we'll open this at the end, so we'll keep it open and we'll see what you write during our presentation today. So let's move on a little bit and see our next technology because we're trying to get so many different ones in. Hey, Mark, what do you know about Drop Canvas? That might be pretty cool. Drop Canvas is an easy way to get content online. Can you back for a second? Uh, to, get, to get content online without having to upload anything, you go to a website called uh, dropcanvas.com. So on dropcanvas.com, you go to your file explorer, you find a picture that you, or a document that you want online. Where's the dog? That one? Yeah. 
And we'll actually put a link to this map on the Padlet site, so you can click on it and then add. Okay. And and then you can add your own links to where you're from as well during the rest of our presentation, so we can see where everybody's from. So what we're just doing is going to Padlet and we're putting uh, the name of this link right here. So just pasting it over so we can use that. So students sometimes with Padlet don't need to type in these real long addresses right here. If you're on your screen, you may need to hit refresh on your screen to make sure you see this updated link in just a moment. And, and the other thing we'll have to go back and make sure that we did is set the, set the, the, the thing like document so that it is open for, edit, for everyone to edit so that you can all... Yeah, you, I'll show them where to do that real quick. So we'll show you where to do that. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, we got that up. Go ahead. So under... Now, while we're seeing that set up, let me give you some ideas here. You know, so often we're talking terminology. It's kind of hard to make terminology sexy and exciting during some classes. You know, when you're trying to describe the parts of a CPU, although it's becoming much smaller, or maybe all these different devices that we keep talking about. So often you can take the inside picture of a computer, and they can all be putting definitions and different items right there uh, as you're going throughout class right there. So uh, Mark is putting, uh, where are you from? Go ahead, Mark, and tell them what you're allowing anyone to edit. So I've, I've changed the title to say, where are you from? I've checked the box that says, allow anyone to edit. If I save this now, you should be able to go to the link on our, on our wall, our on Padlet, and bring up this page, and then click where you are from, just like this. Thumbs up or thumbs down? 
How much does it cost? Yeah. All right, what's next? Hey, let's take a look at, I uh, have, have anything you told us anything yet? Yeah? Okay, I think you're, you're working on that. Okay, I see what you got. Okay, hey, next, beside uh, Dallas is from time. Dallas, but didn't put, put a name down. Somebody's from Toronto, but didn't put their name down. I have to show them a quick picture. Of that. Okay, everybody keep going. Dippity. Hey, let's take, let's like, take a look at Dippity. Don't you love the name? Everybody's saying it. Dippity. I feel like a Dippity some days. As in Sarah. <laughs> okay, but you won't forget that now. Hey, what's dipping? So often, almost everything that we teach in our field seems to be a process. For example, how to make a timeline of events, or creating a Excel spreadsheet. Could be how to program something. It could be accounting. Anything is a process. So what Dippity allows any students to do for free and fabulous is to create an interactive timeline that they can share with the entire class. So let me head over to dippity.com is the website. And I've loaded one from Steve Jobs. Uh, of course, he was born in 1955, and RIP Steve to 2011. So what students can do is take anything that lends themselves to any kind of process, and they can put in minute amount of time or a large period of time. And if we look through Steve Jobs' uh, timeline right here, look what's been updated, everything from pictures of him. He was, uh, if you remember, he originally was with Pixar. And here we have Disney and Apple buys next, if you remember this progress. You're able to put links in here to videos, to any other Facebook comments and so forth. Mark, what do you do with Dippity? Well, he uses to do a timeline on software, or as, as, as a software product, it's introduced uh, to track different versions of it. We might use it to look at the growth of a social network and sort of track that over time or, and current events in technology. So really, really works well. Um, the students actually really adore anything, if I even say an assignment like this. You know, we're convinced that the way that we judge student assessment, student progress, is kind of like throwing multiple choice questions somewhere. You know, we're in a world that you can look up any type of information in a second. So too often, I really think it's true that our students are sharing a little too much, if you get my point. So by assigning more project-based learning, I'm convinced that they even learn more than they would for that quick memorization. If you have to create a 30 item dippity timeline on a certain topic in class, you're gonna learn a lot more mastery than you ever would from a 10 question multiple choice test. And students can learn from each other. Something I wanna point out real quick, let's say these are my two students. Who wants to be uh, the smart one and who will be the less smart one? <laughs> she's smart, for example. So she's brilliant in class, you know? If they're doing an assignment that everyone has the exact assignment, in fact, the point is that we should all get the same answers. If these two students have the exact same answers and they do a nice job because she's brilliant, I have no way of determining that. Well, if the situation was they were trying to make a project like a dippity timeline or any of these other activities that we've been showing, like a thing link, uh, it's pretty clear they have the exact same one. I'm gonna need to see you after class. Yeah, I get that. But here they're all different. And, and what's nice about these tools is at the end of the day, the students have a story to tell. What did you do in class today? I took a multiple choice quiz in Blackboard. Woo! What did you do in class today? I created an interactive piece of multimedia with links and videos. And here it is in my pocket and my phone I'll show it to you. And the last piece about this is, you know, with student grades like multiple choice, what our problem becomes is I can't tell the class that Paul has been not performing very well, <coughs> underperforming at best. Well, of course not, we would never share students' grades. Well, he doesn't really care what I think. I am not in his social network. He cares what his colleagues think. So if his friend so could care, you say, well, how are they gonna care? He's going to demo his dippity to the entire class tomorrow. Well, if you know you that you have to demo this, would you put a little more time and effort than that multiple choice? Because then you're going to try to impress your friends and your colleagues. Pretty cool. What's next, Mark? Let's see. <laughs> hey, 
next thing that we want to show here about the scientivity is I can't wait to get you all engaged in a very simple technology, but it's very powerful. I would like everybody with a smartphone or any smart devices in the room from PC to Mac to iPad to head to a website. Everybody read this website with me. What's it called? Simplemeet.me. Everyone notice there's no .com on this particular site. So we're going to create a simplemeet.me, if everybody could head there. Here's how we do it. I'm at the simplemeet.me, and I'm going to start chat. And the number you want to jot down is 7720. Okay, everybody, here's what's going to happen. Do you notice there's a second blank on the right? It says join a chat. Well, Mark's going to hit start right now. You're going to type in 7720. Everybody, okay. what's the number? Seven, seven, two, zero. <laughs> Sound more exciting, Mark. Okay, next. <laughs> so Mark has uh, started a chat right here. Hopefully our internet is a happy place right now. Usually it's up like that, Mark. That's cool. <laughs> so help us spread the word and let others know and join the service, too. Uh, are we nailing the web here? Yeah. Are we calling the web? We will uh, keep this one in the oven and come back to it. But what it allows you to do is create a chat room, and then you give the link for the numbers to anybody who wants to join this room, and you can have 30, 40 people in there and just chat. And the nice part about it is no one needs an account. It's not like, oh, I'm on Google or oh, I'm on Yahoo or oh, I'm on AOL or oh, I'm on Facebook. You don't, you don't need to have an account. You can create a chat room, give people that link, and then they're good to go. So if you, don't, if you want to uh, hold it, Hold the interactive session this way, it's a nice way to go, but I don't know why the web is with this one. Uh, you can also save and record the entire conversation. Let me see. I try it. No, I'll get excited too. Everybody else have the same problem? Uh, our apologies on that one. But we'll come back. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Hey, hey, next, there's something called Twyla, Mark. This could actually work. We'll try Twyla. Twyla is a website that goes through your Twitter stream. If you're a Twitter person and they tweet a lot, and it looks for common words and ideas and thoughts uh, from and hashtags from your from your Twitter stream, and it will then create a, a, basically a newspaper. So it's spelled T W Y L A H. So Twyla, misspelled just a tad. T W Y L A H dot com, and so this is my Twyla page, and. Uh, it, my Twilight page is twilight.com slash checkmark, which is my Twitter name. Do y'all get it? Checkmark is a teacher. Uh. <laughs> I didn't know that. And here are some of the tweets that I've, uh, that, that we've posted, or that I've had on, on Twitter recently. And you can see that it, it, it puts my tweets in, in categories. So here are some things about the classroom, when I was on CBS radio a few weeks ago, a whole bunch of things I tweeted about at Bentley. Uh, uh, some, some, some stuff I knew about Cengage. Oh, there we go. Last week we were, we were at South by Southwest. And it, so it'll, if you're an avid tw Twitter user, it, it's a nice thing because it sort of gives you a whole profile of things you've been doing. Uh, I tweeted about when, when we heard Bill Gates last week, uh, some tweets about social media. And so it takes the hashtags and sort of groups your tweets in this uh, magazine style format to make them easy to read. This is updated, uh, yeah. So for example, if I come back tomorrow and I tweet a whole bunch of other stuff, it'll look differently. I didn't do this. In fact, let's okay. go back to the screenshot in the, uh, in the slide deck. When we did it, um, some of the screens, this was what it looked like was a couple weeks ago and some of the things since I've tweeted since are now up there. So it basically goes out to, this is big data in action. It goes out and gets everything from my Twitter stream, analyzes it in real time, puts, puts the hashtags and the, and the topics together, grabs some pictures, and makes it look like a magazine. There we go. All right, this is the And then it gives me my trending topics, things I've tweeted out lately. So we'll go with a Cengage one right here. 
So you can see uh, what Mark's been uh, tweeting today. And you'll notice the local photo. So it kind of is neat. Instead of, you know, sometimes when you tweet a lot, it just becomes this, this long sort of information. But to really put it together kind of in that magazine layout makes it a lot more intuitive. And engaging it is. And exciting to read. So you could have this, you could uh, interact with your students as well. And it would be a lot better discussion than simply to have it uh, listed in a typical Twitter follow. Hey, next one I can't wait to show you is a free and fabulous technology called paper.li. Again, notice there's no .com. Paper.li, the li technically stands for like literacy. What you're allowed to do is create a newspaper. Now, of course, a newspaper to a four-year-old child is an iPad page that doesn't turn properly. Um, but our students nowadays, they'll notice, you say, well, you create an entire newspaper every day? Not exactly. So Mark, while I'm getting this set up, let them know a little more about paper a lot. What you do is you can create an account in Paperly. You can find RSS feeds or websites that update with, and blogs with updated content regularly. Choose the topics that you're interested in. Register those topics or those websites with Paperly. And then Paperly will go out to each of those sites and grab the most recent content from them and post them on online in, in this format for you. And then you can say, I want to update it every day, every week, every month. More like every day or every week. I don't think it's every month. And daily or weekly, yeah. Daily or weekly, and it'll tell you when it's going to update. It says next update in about 18 hours. And so you can go here. If there are blogs or websites you want to follow, such as the ones that I mentioned in my talk yesterday, list them here. And then you don't have to go to all of them. It'll bring in the, the headlines from each one in one place. You just go to this one place and it'll bring in all this, all this stuff that you can read and stay up to date on the topics that you're interested in. So let me create a quick little paper here. I'm clicking Create a Paper. And we can say, we call it the uh, Course Technology Times. So we could, and this, you know, our students don't know enough about current events. You know how they get. They don't listen to media, the newspaper. It seems like they're a little isolated. But by creating their own paper, they can make it daily, morning, or evening edition, or weekly right here. Let me just go with the weekly edition. I'm hitting next. So now, you're not actually having to type in every single article. You're selecting what you would find important. Well, of course I want to go under Tech and Science, and I can start deciding what different topics I would like to add to my paper, Mark. And after Kurt adds, adds some topics in. Try. Uh, my mouse is out of here, no, okay. No. That, that, that content will be added to the newspaper, and she can read through it every day. Uh, and and what a lot of people will do is they'll then tweet that their paper league is out if it comes out every day. You can set up so if people follow you on Twitter, it will notify them that things you're interested in are out there. Does it source? I'm sorry? Does it source? Okay. Yes. Does it source? Yes. It'll tell you exactly where the content comes from. I'm sorry. Uh, scroll, scroll down there. You have general. Yeah, I'm Your screen's not wide enough, that's the problem. My screen's not wide enough, so I've had a little trouble dragging and dropping because my projection system made it tiny. But, but it, I can drag and drop this. You drag content. topics from the left over to the right. And for each category you pick on the left hand side, there will be a series of websites related to that where you can do a search and it'll bring up topics of interest and you, you can drag them over. Or just click the plus sign? Yeah, I'm trying to do this. Just click the plus. Yeah. So we're going to pretend that's done. And, and if this works, I'll we have a new newspaper. We'll have a newspaper coming up with, with the topics that, that we just chose. And so it's a great way to say, if you want students to bring current events to the classroom, they don't have to go find them. They, they select the choices that comes to them. They, they can look through this for the free minute, a few minutes before class begins. And then uh, here are some of the topics that Corinne chose. Uh, so in the technology environment, here's some of the latest uh, tech and science topics of the day. And they can put this out on their Facebook, they can read each other's. You may even assign that they have to pull a, you know, a discussion question from their paper each week to post within that discussion board. I think every one of our technology classes 
not just office, not just web design, not just business, all needs to have a component where we're discussing the current and latest and greatest technologies. You know, students shouldn't go to the store and go, oh, do you know they have computers now that you can touch? You know, it shouldn't be a surprise to them. This needs to be an ongoing topic in each one of our classes. You can also set it up so that you can follow your friends' papers as well. And if any if people have their own blogs or Twitter feeds, you can add those kinds of that kind of information into into Paperly as well. And there's newsstands, so you can um, get a subscription basically to any paper that you would like to follow. The other thing that's nice about this is there's a mobile app for it. So what you do on your laptop or on your tablet, you can you can listen, you can watch on your phone or read on your phone as well. And whenever there's an app that has a, a web app and a corresponding mobile app, that's an opportunity to talk about synchronization and how information really lives in the cloud and gets, and gets sent to each of your devices. And the device has the responsibility of displaying it appropriately for on the screen that you're going to be viewing it. You know, I often like to show what are the latest, greatest technologies. Another one, another bell ringer, if you would, is if you haven't lately <laughs>
through silly hats are you all see at the bottom? There I am. <laughs> so this is the new office hours. Mark, don't look at the video at this time. We could also, seriously, we could also do this is record your Google Hangout to, to video and have it automatically uploaded to YouTube. So if you are getting a lesson or a, or a study center or a review session, it can, re, it can be recorded, automatically uploaded to YouTube, and you can embed that somewhere else online later. Um, so I'm going to change my, my hat here. I'll turn off effects. I could also... <laughs> I can share my screen if I wanted to do that instead. And then create the videos on my screen. That's what Mark has. Hey, how many people can be in a Google Hangout, Mark? You can have up to nine people or in a Google Hangout. So one of the advantages this has over Skype is that Skype can only screen share with, with two people. And if you have a Google Plus account, you can have a group of nine people in here. You can also go to Google Drive, and I should be able to a uh, shared document. If I want to print, uh, print to see a document that I've added to the Hangout, uh, there it is. So she can, see the, she can see the document and then we can talk about it. Right at the top. And you might be able to edit this if you want. So this is great how I'm using Google Hangouts quite often is for uh, students. <coughs> if they have some, you have some virtual office hours, I'm looking at one of Mark's documents. They can show me what they're thinking. We can look at it together, collaborate. Uh, really neat to do a class. And you know what? Almost every student has a Gmail account, and so they obviously have access to Google Hangouts. And they can even use their mobile device. You can do a Google Hangout on an Android phone or an iPhone uh, without, without difficulty. So we've been playing around with this uh, for doing virtual office hours, also when uh, to do <coughs> tutoring from a remote distance, one-on-one. -on -one. And it's also a cool thing to do uh, to have group work uh, for projects where students can't be in the same virtual place, in the, in the same physical place. And it's real easy to add any of your colleagues or students directly to it. Uh, you can add Ken Boldoff and hang out with anybody in our group. Um, boy, that looks scary, Mark. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Let's close it. <laughs> Almost. So, in, uh, you're starting to see with all these new great ideas that, you know, we really need to stay alert to new technologies. And Mark and I are avid readers. I love Mashable. What do you love? I read TechCrunch a lot. And Gadget. And a number of other and ones. Gadget. And Gadget. So, you want to stay alert to new technologies. And my sound is down. That's right. Let me try that one more time. No, no, other videos work. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, let's see. Let's turn that up because we were hearing voices in our heads earlier. So, you know, we want to stay attuned to new technologies.
We have given you a bunch of tools for your toolbox, and we hope you'll take them home and try one or two or all ten of them on Monday. <laughs> Think about it on the plane, and, and really take these and use them and figure out what you can do with them to make your classes even more exciting than they are now. And we learned something new. Oh!